Hi, I'm Ben Hankey. I'd like to show you how to make a Knight Rider light pattern using Pixel Blaze. So I got an email from a Pixel Blaze customer saying, hey, how do I how do I get into writing patterns? I want to make a Knight Rider thing. And, uh, you know, we've all seen this effect, right? So this goes back to the 80s TV show, car gains sentience and fights crime and all that kind of good stuff, right? So just looking at it, uh, we can see that there's uh, there's basically a leader light right and then everything after that is sort of getting dimmer and so this leader light is bouncing back and forth um, and leaving a trail of lights behind it so one thing we can kind of get from this is we're going to need to know where this is where the leader light is in the, in the whole bounce sequence and we're going to have to know which direction it's traveling in uh, then we're also going to need some way to kind of keep track of where it's been in, in a sort of brightness so we can do a fade on that so I swap over to Pixel Blaze, and the first thing I've done is I've set it up for 16 pixels because that's all the LEDs I have connected at the moment. And I uh, clicked on New Expression, and I've got the, the example pattern here. Um, I don't need any of this stuff, so I'm going to delete that, delete that. All right, so let's make a couple of variables here. So I need to know where the leader, where the leader is. And so let's say it starts you know, at pixel zero, like all, all the way on the left. Then I need to know a direction. And we can use um, the number one, either positive or negative, to indicate whether we're going further down the strip or coming back up in the other direction. So let's start direction going down the strip. And we need to know, uh, need to keep track of uh, sort of a fade for everywhere that it's been. So we'll We'll keep track of you know each of these each of these pixels. So we'll make a pixels array, the size of the pixel count, and so pixel count is an automatic variable that is based on your your strip pixels here. So this is just going to automatically be however big your, your strip is is set to. Okay, and so um, every frame we we render, we're going to be called in this before render function. What we want to do is we want to move the leader a little bit and fade out some of the pixels. So I'm going to take the leader and I'm going to add to it the direction. But because this is rendering at 370 frames a second, uh, that's just going to just be way too fast. So I need to slow it down a little bit. So we have this delta and this is uh, how long it's been since the last render frame. And I can use this as sort of a, a a linear amount of time that's elapsed. Uh, so I can actually multiply that by the delta and it'll um, it'll be a much smaller smaller number. So instead of a whole increment every number, you know, maybe there's only a couple of milliseconds uh, that have occurred. I actually need, I don't really want the whole delta. So let's multiply that by some fraction and we'll play with this number later. But um, this is basically the speed. Actually, you know, this is a good idea. Let's Let's put that into a variable. Okay, so now we have the leader going in the direction based on how fast it should go and how much time has elapsed, uh, basically creating an animation. So this leader is just gonna zip along. But we need to know when it hit the end, right? So it's gonna start over here at pixel index zero and it's gonna shred all the way over until it hits the end here. And we want it to stop and kind of reverse direction and go the other way. So. Uh, what we need to do is detect when it goes past. So these are all indexed from zero all the way up through one less than pixel count. So as soon as it's greater than or equal to pixel count, it's kind of off the end of the strip here. So let's check for that. So if the leader is greater than um, pixel count, then we need to reverse direction. So we're going to take direction and negate it, basically. Turn it into the negative version of itself. OK. And if you prefer, we could put curly braces on the stuff. Right. OK. So now it'll bounce back and forth. Um, and just to kind of see what's going on here, um, as you can see, I've been typing this whole time. I've had an invalid. 
uh, expression down here, so it's been kind of not compiling on the fly. But let's go ahead and update this. Let's fix it so we can actually see what's going on here. So the hue, of course, is red, uh, and the saturation is fully saturated, and the brightness, let's go ahead and do one brightness. And we get solid red, and that's great. But we only want it to be bright. Uh, let's just see the leader pixel. So we'll just paint only the leader pixel, which means we're only going to um, display this at 100% if um, if our later pixel is is in this pixel position right so this is the index of the pixel that we're rendering at this time so let's do this so we'll set the value all right the value here to to zero right because we normally don't want things then we'll see if the if the index equals our leader um, and of course, this is not really going to show up very much because we're incrementing leader in little tiny bits, and it's not going to be exactly equal. It's going to be some fractional thing. Like instead of pixel one, it's going to be 1.002 or something like that. So we need to uh, snap this to an integer value. So we'll use the floor 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 function for that. And then we're going to set v to one. Okay. So we see our leader pixel here, and it's moving, but it's way too slow. We want it to get a little bit faster than that, so let's speed it up. Okay, cool. And, uh-oh, where'd it go? Okay, so we've got the leader uh, check for it going past the end, but we don't have the leader check for going the other direction. So if the leader is less than zero, which is the first index here, then we also need to bounce the direction right so now it should bounce back and forth okay awesome and that looks that looks pretty good all right but we need that kind of swooshy fade thing going on so instead of just painting um, the index here what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to set a, a value in our pixel array where the uh, the leader is so we will set it should be pixels. Pixels index of the floor of leader, right? Equals one. Uh oh, array out of bounds. Okay, so leader. That's right. So for a small uh, amount of time, the leader is actually greater than pixel count. We don't want that. So maybe we can fix it with this. Nope, that triggered the rated index out of bounds also. All right, so maybe we need to snap later. So once it's kind of out of bounds, we need to have it come back in bounds. Okay, now we're no longer accessing. Oop, it looks like on the negative side as well. Okay. Okay, so now if it's outside of bounds, we snap it back in bounds, and we can see that we no longer are trying to access this array outside of its outside of its position. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to draw these pixels instead of drawing our leader pixel. All right, so we're basically painting this leader pixel into our array uh, each time, and now we need to draw that here. And so instead of doing this stuff here. We're going to set the two pixels index of index. Okay, that's great. But it just painted that solid red and then stopped. If I change it, it'll reset. And you can see it's just growing and then stopping. And it's probably painting back on itself, but we can't tell because we haven't implemented any fade yet. So let's implement a fade. So to do that, I'm going to iterate over all these pixels uh, using a, a variable here. We'll start it at zero. And I want it to go until it's less than pixel count, because that's how big our array is. And then increment each loop. And then I'm going to take pixels, right, index of i, and I need to modify it uh, so that it's less than it was before. So let's say minus equals 0.1. Okay, that seems to be too fast because it's not really giving us much fade. But maybe a smaller number. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Or even a smaller fade. 
And actually, um, we're going to need to use delta here as well because we want it to fade in a consistent way. So let's take delta times 0.01. OK, starting to get there. So it's not quite long enough. So let's reduce the, f oop, decrease the fade. And that's not enough. Yeah, that's starting to get there, but we're really not able to really see that leader too well. So what we're going to do down here is we're actually going to square V. So we get a little bit more contrast there. What is it doing? Oh, okay. So it looks like our pixels are actually going negative, and the square of a negative is a positive. So once it gets even more negative, it's kind of popping back up. So what we need to do is then, after we've set decremented our pixels, we need to set it to a minimum of zero, which, of course, we use the max function for. So we want to take the larger of the pixel and zero. And now we can use a regular square. Uh, and we can cube it if we want sharper. And now this looks pretty good. But before we go, let's turn this into a fade variable so that we can play with it later. All right, so now we can go back up here and change some of our variables to make things faster or slower. So let's change that speed. Nice. But now that it's faster, we probably need a little bit more fade. So let's try that. Not too bad. We can keep playing with this. and adjust as necessary.